Hey guys, welcome back to Community StarCraft 2. I'm your host Sidewinder and I'm back here for some more tutorials. Today's video is going to be a Protoss vs Zerg scouting guide. So that you guys know what you're supposed to be looking for and you're not just walking into death blindly so you can react. So we are going to be watching a game between Titan, who may be from the Team VVV, I'm not totally sure who this is, and he's going to be fighting Liquid Red, and like most of my scouting videos, I'm just going to completely keep uh, you in the dark from the opposing race. So, let me get rid of this, you can't see their supply or anything, or get any hints of what's going on. Of course you can see it there, but whatever. Um, so what we're going to see here is a little unusual. Titan's going to open up without walling off. Um, and this could be a little bit knowing what Red's going to do, but if you're confident enough in your Zealot Micro, you can actually get away with this kind of stuff. It helps your build run just a little bit faster. I wouldn't typically uh, recommend this to lower league players, so just kind of ignore the stuff he's going to be doing for right now. We're just going to focus on what he sees and how he reacts. So the first thing that you want to do, obviously, let me uh, grab a drone here really quick and pause the game. I know I'm going to I'm going to keep you in the dark, but I want to show you guys the things that Zerg are basically capable of. Um, you want to be sure that you know exactly what the Zerg can do. So if you go into the Zerg's building guide, they have to spend one of their drones, obviously, to make a building or anything. Uh, if you look at their basic mutations, you can see everything that they're supposed to be doing in here. So you can kind of study up and see what unlocks what. Uh, you can see that a spawning pool will unlock a roach warren and a banelings nest. You can see that the evolution chamber will unlock spore crawlers. The spawning pool will also unlock spore crawlers and queens. Uh, and then once they tech up to lair, which is what they can do here on their hatchery, which also requires a spawning pool, they can unlock a whole bunch of different stuff like hydralis dens, spires, infestation pits, uh, nidus networks, and finally ultralis caverns and um, greater spires, which unlocks broodlords on hive tech, which is yet another upgrade on their lair. So you basically need to go in and figure out what everything does for the zerg, so that you, once you get their information, you can see what that means. Uh, so if you see something like a spawning pool up, you can say, okay, well, what does a spawning pool make? Well, a spawning pool makes zerglings. You can see that's what, it that's what it requires. A roach warren makes roaches. A hydralis den makes hydralis. Stuff like that. So you know what your scouting information is going to mean. So I'll kind of walk you through that a little bit. I'll explain timings a little bit since this is very a, ti a very timing-oriented matchup. And we'll just kind of watch this game and I'll tell you what's going on as it's happening. We're just going to kind of skip through a little bit here until Titan actually gathers some scouting information so that I can just give you guys the stuff you're looking for instead of other random stuff like probes mining minerals. So once again, don't pay too much attention to any of this kind of stuff. Titan is going to be heading out, checking around, making sure that there's nothing weird going on uh, over here. I'm not quite sure why he would be scouting there, but also one thing you need to know is where the scouting locations, or rather where the spawn locations actually are. This is on Antigua Shipyard, so you can spawn here. You can spawn at this base right here if you look on the minimap. You can spawn at this base, or you can spawn at this base, so that you know where to send your probe out. Uh, you typically always want to scout after your first pylon. So whatever probe you use to pull and put your pylon down, which you're usually going to want to actually put right here to power your wall, or put right here to power another wall, uh, send this first probe out so you can get scouting information so that you won't lose to something like a Zergling Rush. Uh, but we're going to see what Titan actually sees. He's going to walk up here with his probe. He sees the Overlord coming out. That's pretty obvious that it means that the Zerg's right here. He's going to come up here. He's going to see the, this hatchery starting. So what you're going to want to typically do is whenever you see something, look at your own supply. This is the Protoss player supply. Subtract whatever they use to make this hatchery, and that's about what supply they're on right now. So minus one, they're at about 16 supply. So if they're going for a hatchery that's this fast, that means they hatched first, which is pretty risky. Um, so I mean, you just kind of want to know the timings and know what stuff is going to mean. So if they're going for this first hatchery uh, that quickly, and they obviously will not have a spawning pool in here done quite yet, since they went for that hatchery first, that's going to mean you're going to be safe from aggression for quite a while, so you can get away with just a little bit, but you still need to respect a few number of zerglings that can still get inside your base. So Titan's going to head up here. He's going to see a spawning pool, which just started. You can see its life bar here. You can see it's only about 17.5% um, of the way done as indicated by the health, and so you can kind of judge the timing. So you can say, 
If you learn a little bit more about the Zerg race, you can go in here and say, a spawning pool takes 65 seconds to build. So plus 65 seconds, that's 3 minutes 55. That's when they can first start their Zerglings, and then Zerglings take 24 seconds to come out. So you can kind of time everything out. So if you see that this spawning pool is only that far done, it's probably about another minute or so from finishing, plus another 30 seconds, plus another about 45 seconds to run your base. So you can time out how long everything takes from the time that you see whatever's starting to when aggression can actually be possible. So Titan should be totally safe from Zergling aggression right here, only because there's really low likelihood that this Zerg player is going to send out a whole bunch of Zerglings at one time. Uh, so if he just has a Zealot, maybe a Sentry or two, he should be able to hold off pretty much whatever he wants and take his expansion pretty safely. So uh, just be sure that you're paying attention to your timing so you're not like walking in here, seeing a full spawning pool, you know, all the way done and being like, oh, well, I still have plenty of time. No, that means Zerglings can be at your base in about 45 seconds. So uh, considering he sees all this time available on the spawning pool, since he knows how long it takes to make Zerglings, uh, and he knows that he puts that he put it he already invested in a hatchery first. There's really no chance of an aggression coming out here, but we'll continue on with the game and see what else he sees. So basically, the the opening scout, uh, you're going to want to get in there and see what you can see. I know we didn't see it in this game, and I'm not sure if we will in the rest of the guide, considering the replays that I download are just whatever I can find, and I will go through those games and kind of give you the scouting information. I don't take forever searching for the perfect replays to get these off on, but I still like to explain concepts that aren't shown. So if Titan is scouting on a four-player map here, he's going to have to send a probe here, and then here. You know, if the Zerg player was not here, he'd have to scout here and then here, but it could have been too late for him to see a pool that's going up super early, and he wouldn't know that Zerglings were coming after him. So if you're in that kind of situation and you scout off of your pylon with this first probe, and you don't see anything at this first location, and it's on a four-player map, just use the probe that you set down your first gateway or your forge with. Send them out to the opposite base that the, scout, that the probe first scouted. So that you have two probes scouting, you'll be very safe from any sort of early aggression, or at least have plenty of time to react if you do that. Because the last thing you want to do in this matchup is uh, get to a point where you're scouting out, and you can't scout out something like a six pool or super fast circling cheese in time and you just die because you don't have that information. So pull one extra probe if you really need to. It's the safe way to play, and it's the smart way to play. So we're going to see Titan going ahead and setting up for his expansion here. He did see the hatchery first. He saw the late spawning pool. He knows that there shouldn't be too much aggression coming out. He's still going to kind of poke around with these units a little bit, but he's pretty safe from pretty much anything right now. So he's going to go for a one-gate expansion. He's going to throw down a Stargate at his front door. And I kind of want to talk about the Stargate a little bit. Uh, this has a ton of utility in this matchup in the early game. There's no coincidence that you're why you're going to see uh, a ton of pro players and stuff using Stargates. It's because they provide safety, because Roaches and Zerglings can't hit Void Rays. They provide scouting intel, because Phoenix can fly really fast and you can get in there and bug them just a little bit with your units. Um, they also provide something where you can kind of coax the Zerg player into a reaction so that you can kind of beat them up with your tech advantage. So any form of early Stargate is really smart. Now you can see a couple of Zerglings did slip in here because this was not a, per a perfect wall. Uh, he's going to have to work a little bit to get this all taken care of. And this is, uh, looks like 14 Zerglings. So not too bad. Um, he has a few units out, and if you were really sloppy with your unit control, you could, you know, just lose a whole bunch of probes right here. So just be smart. Don't play it risky. Make a wall right here, or at least a wall with one little space so you can hold a zealot on hold position and hold these zerglings off from behind so that your sentry and stalker don't take any damage at the same time. Just play it safe. This guy's playing a little risky, so I kind of want to explain the elements of risk in a good replay. So you can see he lost his sentry to Zerglings, which sucks. He's going to lose his Zealot to Zerglings. The Stalker's going to have a really hard time holding everything off, so he's going to actually have to pull probes to deal with this, and it's going to be annoying. Uh, so just don't get yourself in the situation. It sucks. The other thing you can do that I really don't see enough pro players doing is when you make your wall like this, just send out another probe somewhere. Sit at some strange place on the map, like right here, uh, or like right here, or somewhere that they're not usually going to scout. Right here would be work would work well too, or right here. And then at about this about seven minute or so time, 
just run it in and see what it sees. So if he ran that probe in and he saw a whole bunch of zerglings, he'd say, oh crap, I need to make sure I have enough units out to deal with that. Or if he ran the zergling in here and saw like six roaches sitting right here, he'd be like, oh crap, now I need to really make something that's going to react to those roaches. So the problem that I see a lot in this matchup is people will play so uh, riskily, I guess. They won't play it so that they're being as safe as they possibly can. So that stuff like this gets into their base and they have to work harder to get rid of that. Whereas if they just spent one probe, walked it in here to see what kind of units they have, then you would know what kind of aggression would be possible and what would be coming out. So don't be afraid with your scouting probe. Tr uh, t instead of just running it back home and forgetting about it, just stash it somewhere. Like, And you can also put up proxy pylons, which will help your pushes later. But just stash it somewhere so that you can go back in there about this seven minute or so time. Get in there, see what kind of units they have, so you might not just die from a quick all-in. Um, going to go ahead and press forward in this game. I'm just not going to explain one other thing. And you can see these Zerglings are still being annoying. They're not doing too much damage because Titan has good unit control. He may have lost a probe or two, so that still kind of sucks. So this Void Ray, as we said, is kind of the safety route here in the very beginning of the game. What he wants to do with this Void Ray is put out a few Phoenix and do as much harassment as possible, but also he's getting scouting information. You can see there's a Roach Horn down. You can see there's an Evolution Chamber. You can see there's a Macro Hatchery. If you see a macro hatchery like this, which means it's not a hatchery at their main or any sort of expansion or whatever, that usually means that either, number one, they're not spending their queen energy properly and using larva injects on their uh, hatcheries, or secondarily, if they actually are, uh, it means they're going to be using a lot of zerglings, because zerglings are really larva intensive, and if they're continually spending all their larva on zerglings, they're not going to have enough larva to spend it on any other units like drones or infestors or roaches or whatever. So macro hatch is a good tell to say there's going to be a lot of zerglings coming in. The roach warren's out, so you definitely have to respect that. But with this kind of wall, uh, with decent reinforcement and a stargate out, you should be safe from that kind of play. So we'll keep coming out. Um, or well, rather, we'll keep going. We're not coming out of anywhere. Um, so what we're going to see is the Protoss player is still continually going over here. He's going to kill a couple of Overlords, which is really, I mean, it's, it's decent. You might as well do something with your units if they're out. But he's going to continue to scout around in here as much as possible. He wants to try and deny the Zerg's third base as much as he can. But he's trying to force a reaction into some units that his next stage of tech is going to be able to beat up pretty hard. So if he comes in here and the Zerg player sees, oh no, there's a lot of Stargate units out, how am I supposed to deal with that? Zerg players ideally will deal with, deal with that with uh, either Infestors or just Queens or Spore Crawlers or something cheap. So what this Protoss player is trying to do is make them react with Hydralisks, which if you just turn out Colossus right after that, the Hydralisks will die really easily because that's a great matchup for the Colossi. But still, I mean, he's still, get, he's still getting scouting information. So he sees an infestation pit coming down. If he were to run his Phoenix around in here, he could see what else is going on. Uh, but typically, he knows that if an infestation pit's coming down, he's probably not going to see Hydras. Um, so he knows pretty well how to react to that kind of stuff. You can see Rhett has a lot of queens out to push this kind of stuff off. So as you get higher and higher in the leagues, Zerg players will be a little smarter about that kind of stuff. But um, I think that's going to be pretty much it for this replay. Uh, you can kind of get the general gist of what's just what should be going on in about the first 10 minutes or so. Stargate is really good. Another thing you can do that I'm not sure we're going to see in any other game is on your cybernetics core. Whoa. I'm not sure if that pylon is just finishing or just dying. But uh, on your cybernetics core, you have something called hallucinate. And if you make a sentry, you can use the hallucination ability right here, uh, which basically makes it so that you can make units that are fake. They don't do any damage. But you can hallucinate Phoenix and you can get scouting in there without having to spend money on a unit that's gonna just going to go in there and die. So that's something I don't see enough either. Um, really, this is a matchup you should be quite aggressive in your scouting. If you have a robotics out like this, you can see Titan is croning out a couple of observers. You can sit an observer like right here. You can sit one between your bases to see if they're actually advancing. You can also float an observer around in the back of their base to see what kind of tech they have. And most Zerg tech is going to be around the main hatchery or just behind the natural hatchery. You'll rarely see it anywhere else. So uh, now that you know what to look out for in the first few minutes, let's go ahead and look at another, maybe another replay or two and see if we can find anything that I didn't cover in this initial replay. So I'll be right back with that. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm just going to show you a little bit of this game, which is a uh, perspective from Mouse's Mana or Mana. Everyone says his name differently. I'm not quite sure what the right way is to say it. But what I want to show off in this replay is the a different opening from the first game from the Zerg player. 
and a more proper opening from a Protoss player as opposed to the last game. So Mana's going to get in here. He's going to see that the hatchery is about maybe a third of the way done. Uh, and it's kind of late if you went hatch first for it to be that late. So he still wants to get into the main base, see what else is going on here. He comes in here, he now sees a spawning pool that's totally completed. So if he's not already uh, preparing to fully wall off, then he needs to be doing that right now, considering that spawning pool is done. Uh, it shouldn't be too overly aggressive, considering Rhett did spend some uh, minerals on his hatchery instead of a ton on zerglings. So that's a little bit of a safety uh, you know, scout right there, just so that he knows what's possible in terms of spending. But if that pulls up, you want to make sure that you have that up, and even put your probe like right here at the watchtower so you can see any zerglings coming uh, and react to that. The way you want to react to that if you're running on a map where you can wall off your natural with some buildings is uh, just exactly how Mana's doing. So he will have a Nexus here at the natural, which he did go Nexus first, which is quite risky. I would actually recommend just going Forge first, but essentially your wall off is just going to be Forge, a Gateway, and a Cybernetics Core so that you can wall that off entirely. So if Zerglings come up, they'll just be butting up against your buildings and you'll have a cannon done hopefully in time to deflect that. So uh, let's go ahead and just watch a little bit more of this game and if there's not really anything else useful in this, I'll just cut this off right now and go to the next replay, but we will see. So Now he knows there are Zerglings on the map, so the Zerglings are going to run out. He can figure out how much time he has to spend, or rather has to uh, get his wall completed. Zerglings typically won't, won't run past his cannon, considering like only a couple Zerglings are going to make it through there alive. But if you are really afraid of any sort of zergling pressure, you can just drop a second gateway right here if they're like right at your front door, and then cancel the gateway and put up a cybernetics core once your first gateway finishes. So there's a couple of other options you can have in this matchup. So you can see Mana completing the wall off right here. It's not a full wall as far as I can tell, uh, considering you can see that I'm pretty sure there's a space right there for at least zerglings to get through, so you want to be a little mindful of that. but. So he's going to go through, we're going to watch a little bit more of this replay and see what else happens in terms of scouting. And yeah, you can see that it is open, so he did just lure that circling into his death. So from after this, uh, I would like to see Mana again pull another probe so that he can uh, get in there and scout. But the other thing you can do, you can just drop a robotics facility first, as we can see that's what Mana's doing right now. And just send out an observer just to see what's going on. Um, you also kind of know have to know how Zergs are going to respond to this kind of opening. They're going to know that you're not going to have a lot of stuff on the field. I mean, it's almost seven minutes, and if you were running like a four gate, uh, you would have way more than that. You'd probably have about ten units right now instead of two. So, Zerg players will take that safety, and they'll either say, "Okay, well, I'm just going to grab a really fast third and expand here, or expand here." or I'm just going to attack you really hard. So you need to be prepared for that kind of stuff. And it's rolling around that time where you're going to get that scouting information if you were to send in another probe or an observer. So let's see what mana actually does once this robotics facility finishes. One thing he's also doing that's very smart is he's holding this watchtower. So if a big roach attack is coming, he, I doubt Red is going to go do, 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 and walk all the way around. He's probably just going to walk right through and push him off this watchtower because walking all the way around just wastes too much time. So we can now see a ro an observer coming out. It is rallied to kill this overlord, which you can see is hiding up here on this cliff. Uh, but I want to see I want to see Mana get in there with that observer and see what's going on in Red's base. So we're going to kind of follow this observer around and see what it sees. And again, we're keeping you guys in the dark. So if you're playing against Zerg, this is the kind of stuff you might see. You're not going to see his whole base like we would in a replay. So I don't want to let you guys cheat and see that kind of stuff. So uh, Zerg going coming out, no big deal. So Matt is going to come up here. He's going to check to see what's up the front door. Spine crawler. Here's some roaches. So this is when he needs to now be a little bit careful. He knows there are some roaches on the field. It is a little late for a big roach attack. But here's another macro hatchery that was really fast. So that macro hatchery is likely for zerglings, but it can also be for drones or just for lazy queen injecting. Uh, so he does see more roaches rallying and another macro hatchery. So this could just be a ton, a ton of zerglings. So you need to be sure that you know how you're going to react to this. Um, the other thing is that if you see Zerg players spending their gas like this on roaches, which roaches obviously do cost gas, if you can get in here and see if their geysers are mining, he obviously sees that one was mining, he can probably figure that this one is, uh, you can see what kind of gas income they're going to have. 
and know what's kind of possible as far as what they might be spending it on. If they're making this many roaches, they're not going to be making something like mutalisks behind this for a little while until they can get the extra gas. They're not going to be making too many infestors behind that, considering, again, you are spending gas on the roaches. One thing you can check is see uh, if these overlords have any sort of speed or upgrades on them, uh, but you usually might need to have a, a unit attack that to see if it does. And obviously if these overlords have speed, that means that they can drop into your base. Uh, but you still want to get this in here. Make sure there's not like a Nidus uh, canal or anything, or rather a Nidus network. Yeah, Nidus canals from the first one. But uh, again, if you go Stargate, that's another thing that can prevent. If you go Stargate and you go flying a Void Ray around here, you can prevent them trying to either uh, Nidus their way in or drop their way in by just having that out there and killing their overlords that are around your base. So I'm going to continue to see what his scout sees. Tons more roaches coming in. So this is a pretty big roach attack coming up. Now he gets in here, now he sees the spire, and it's just barely starting. So he knows, okay, well he wants to go roaches, he wants to attack me as hard as he can, and then following that up is either going to be mutalisks or corruptors to kill whatever I have. So he needs to be very wary of what his scouting information is telling him and what's possible at what time. So his best reaction to this is probably just going to be Templar tech, considering it kind of deals with both of them. He does have some Colossus on the field, but Templar tech with immortals, and or if, if you want to go Templar Tech and Stargate stuff, that'll keep you safe at your base for pretty much anything. So, uh, again, I'm not quite sure how much further we're going to go into this. One other thing you do want to watch out for in the late game is a lot of Zergs like to go Broodlord and Fester. If you see that, you just need the proper responses. You need Blink on your Stalkers. You need High Templar Tech so you can feed back the Infestors and drop Storms underneath the uh, Broodlords or just drop Storms on top of the Broodlings so that your units can advance up. Um, so you need to know how to respond to everything essentially and you need to keep scouting in there with your overseer or not overseer over That's an observer. That's not an over anything um, So here comes a big attack. Uh, Ron is obviously gonna hold that off. Okay. I think that's pretty good for this replay I'm gonna dig around for one more and see if there's anything else that you might want to know in there, but uh, Yeah, it just kind of makes us make assumptions on their gas spending Make assumptions on what units you see out of there or what buildings you might see. So if you see a ton of macro hatcheries, it could just be a big Zergling follow-up. Which, if he's going Spire, it could just be Mutalisk Zergling right after this, which is pretty popular on this map. So you need to be prepared for that. Get stuff like Blink Stalkers, Cannons in your Mineral Line, uh, Storm Tech out, whatever you need to be able to fend that kind of stuff off. So do a little bit of studying, see what's possible based on what the Zerg player builds. I'm going to go for one more replay that hopefully will have new scouting information. So uh, I guess I'll leave it open-ended here. This, may, this video may just end right here, or we may see another game, depending on if I can find anything good. So regardless, stay tuned for more videos. If it does wind up ending, I'll see you guys in a sec. Okay, I am indeed back for one last little bit of this video. I wanted to show you guys a little more standard opener as far as with gateways rather than like trying to forge expand. Uh, this is going to be a situation where you're going to drop your first pile on here at the front door and you're going to drop a gateway and a cybernetic core here to try to wall this off but keep one little space open so your zealot can just sit there and also we'll just watch the scouting information that's going through with it as time goes on considering that's what this is for but uh, I think it's important to know that if you're fighting Zerg you need to know what ways are proper to open in terms of placing your buildings because uh, you could just die if you don't do that right so uh, what the probe did see here is uh, it gets in here it sees the pool is now done it flashed on the minimap for just a second that there was a hatchery there, but it never actually got anywhere, and this is kind of sloppy. He did lose his probe, but he sees that if you see this bubble like blowing up like that, that means that the spawning pool is now done. So now you know when you need to be ready for pressure. And I'm curious, because when he walked past here, he saw something on the minimap. It must have just been this overlord. So if he got back in here and didn't see an expansion, but did see the pool finishing, this could be a cause for concern to say, okay, well, I need to play a little bit safer right now because I know he hasn't brought money in uh, a hatchery yet. This is, of course, if he actually saw that. I saw something flash by on the minimap, but it's probably just that overlord. So essentially, he's seen no expansion, and he does see the spawning pool is now finishing. So a little bit earlier pool than usual. He needs to be a little bit careful here. But we'll go ahead and watch the rest of this. Let me turn it back on to the Protoss player's view. Jump back over to his base. So what you're going to do here is your second, or rather your Cybernex core here, is going to wall this off. So Zerglings can't get around here. Even though it looks kind of open, it's actually not. It's really blocked off. And the Zealot's going to get in this little tiny hole right here. And you're going to set him on hold position so that if any Zerglings come, um, he will be fine as far as blocking that off. So you see he does put him on hold position. 
going to follow that up with the safety tech route that I like to call it, the Stargate, immediately afterward. So he can, at least for one, he knows there's an Overlord over here, so he saw it flow through his base, kill that Overlord. He'll keep himself safe from Roach pressure. He may be able to go in and do a little damage to the Overlords or Queens in the main. Uh, and this is what I like to see. This is perfect. Uh, this probe did not see this this hatchery so you need to be sure you get back in there and you see if that hatchery has been dropped if it hasn't been dropped you could just die to a quick roach play or a quick baneling play so he's gonna get in there okay he sees the hatchery now he's he feels a lot safer because he just saw that so he's like Phew. it was a little bit later of a hatchery but it definitely is there so he's not doing something like roaches back here so this is another key time to scout. If you don't see an overlord, or rather not an overlord, but if you don't see a hatchery down here at the natural, check back in at about five minutes. Get in there, see if their natural hatchery is down. Get back into their main, see if they're what they're doing in their main. You want to have as much information as possible. So uh, he doesn't see very much in the main, but considering the hatchery is done, it's very unlikely that Red's going to be going for any sort of uh, roach play right after this. And he's still going to come in here and zealot with zealots, see if he can force out any units that Red doesn't want to put out quite yet. Up comes the Stargate, and the Stargate is for sure going to see what else is in there, because it's going to be able to get in there. And you can kind of float it back here where it can't be hit by queens, uh, and scout around their base a little bit, but we're going to see what he wants to do with that. He, he should know there's an Overlord here, so he wants to get rid of that just to eliminate any possibility of Nidus play. Um, but yeah, so not too, too much new scouting information that we're seeing right now. Here's another Overlord, so that should be two free Overlords, but the Overlord has not seen these Void Rays as far as I can tell. So he might just want to press in here and see what he can do to red off of one base. This is just one gateway, one stargate. So this is interesting. So up comes the attack. Uh, he knows that there are no things like roaches on the field right now because of what he's attacking. He knows there are some queens, there's a spine crawler, so he has an evolution chamber up. So he's obviously drawing conclusions off of what he sees right now. A little more worried about the battle and trying not to lose it. But uh, he definitely will eventually lose it considering he's just on the unit count right now. But, uh, yeah, that didn't tell him too, too much, but he definitely does know what's not ready. What's not ready, things like roaches or hydralis, considering he not, did not see them out yet. But he can still scout in here with his Void Ray and see what's going on. I hope there's something else good in this replay, because I usually don't pre-screen these. I just kind of go, considering this is what you're going to have to do in your own games, is just get information as it comes. Uh, more little harassment over here. And... Uh, yes, he just finally clean up that Overlord. So from here, if you're in this position, um, you need to be careful. Uh, if you're running a lot of Stargate units in terms of Void Rays, you need to be careful because if he puts out about 10 or 12 Hydralisks right now, or a bunch of Mutalisks, y you might just die right then. Um, so you need to be pretty cautious about that. You need to be ready to press back into their base. See if this is a lair yet. Uh, see if you can see any other tech around there. So we're going to go ahead and press on and see how this ends, considering a lot of games will end if you're going heavy Void Rays and, they're, and they realize that and they just put out Hydralisks or they put out Infestors or something. You could just die right there. So Looks like this player wants to continue the pressure on there. The creep spread is now getting pretty bad, so if you come over here and deny it, that's going to help out a lot. No, it's not really scouting, but just general tips. Uh, reinforcing Pylon here. Fast forward just a little more. Okay, so what he sees once again is just Zerglings. He sees Sport Crawlers coming up. Uh, he sees some more Queens out. There, what's really alarming right now is there's no gas spending. Um, he wants to know what is going on with what Red is spending gas on. Um, Red could very well have a third, which we don't know. Uh, but in terms of gas, Red could have a ton saved up. And if you want to cheat, yep, there's almost a thousand gas saved up. So Red could just dump out about, you know, five infestors right away or he could dump out about 10 mutalisks right away and you need to be wary of that kind of stuff you're not going to have this kind of information in the game so you need to see when you're attacking okay there's only zergling so there has to be spending the he has to be spending his gas on something and i can't just assume that ooh i'm, I'm only going to be fighting zerglings for the rest of the time you need to kind of jump to conclusions and say what would kill my army and i either need to prepare against that or I need to find a way to get something in there, whether it's, you know, hallucination off of your cybernetics core, or if it's just another Stargate unit like a Phoenix. Just get in there and see what's going on. I'm going to watch the rest of this game, just to see what else happens, because this isn't a very typical push. Again, more Zerglings, more Zerglings. If you're cheating, you notice Rhett's, drop just all, or Rhett's gas just all dropped at the same time. 
I'm guessing Infestors, considering it's a little late for that Mute account. Uh, if, they're want, if they want to go Mutas, they'll typically have it out by about 10 minutes. He's going to check for Rhett's third, and it is indeed there. Just going to bug him just a little bit. And there are the Infestors, and yep, this should actually kill this Protoss player, because he was not respecting that enough. So, if you see something like Infestors that are possible that early, you might just want to grab High Templar, you might just want to grab Early Colossus, you might even want to grab Phoenix, since you can lift the Infestors and kill them with your Phoenix. So yeah, this was one of the situation where the Protoss player definitely did not respect the Zerg player's gas bending, or what could possibly be coming out on, in terms of his gas bending. If you look back in the Protoss player's base, what does he have? He has four gateways, a Stargate, and a Robotics with no Colossus Bay anywhere. So he's probably just dead right now. So yeah, um, I think that's going to do it. We're going to look at whatever this is really quick. And uh, look at that picture. I've never seen that before. Uh, anyway, so uh, we're going to actually just wrap this up here. I hope you guys got enough information out of this guide to kind of put you in the right spot for your scouting against Sturg if you're a Protoss player. If not, I always try to answer all the comments that I get if people have extra questions, so leave them down in the comments field below. Uh, let me know if, if there's anything else I can do in terms of helping you guys understand the game a little better. I'll be back for more videos, of course, and stay tuned for that. I'll see you guys later.